Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, greatest sum divisible by three. I'm gonna to try to make quick work of this problem. So the idea here is that we're given this list of numbers and we want to identify the maximum possible sum that we could make that would be divisible by three. So it doesn't have to be a contiguous subarray. We can just choose however many elements that we want from here. We can't repeat the same element, but we can choose any and all elements. So the maximum possible sum would probably just be the total if the total is divisible by three. And we would know that by modding it by three and checking if the remainder is equal to zero. And also recognize that just like in yesterday's problem, three is a hard-coded value. They didn't give us some variable value k, they gave us three, the constant. So possibly we can use that to our advantage. And now it's also possible that maybe we just don't have a sum that's divisible by three, in which case I think we could just return zero because I guess not including anything is a possible sum. And also we're guaranteed that everything in here is going to be positive. So knowing all of that, there is two like lines of thinking that you could go down. The first might be like the brute force way, because how do you know what the maximum possible sum is gonna be unless you try every single possible way? So some kind of like backtracking approach and then maybe apply dynamic programming to that. And that's possible, but it's not like a trivial thing to do in this problem. There's the other line of thinking, which is kind of similar to yesterday's problem, where you use a little bit of the math to arrive at a greedy solution. And that's the approach I'm gonna favor. I think we can get both approaches down to linear time and constant space. So that's why I'm gonna favor this one. I think just it, intuitively it's a bit easier. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna start with the fact that we can compute the entire sum. And if that's divisible by three, like that's the most greedy thing we can do. If that's divisible by three, well then just return the sum. But if it's not divisible by three, then what would the solution be? Well, what are the possibilities? Well, the remainder could either be a one or the remainder could be two. So what are we gonna do in each of these cases? I've nearly solved the entire problem for you, believe it or not. Just by breaking it down into these terms, you should get pretty close to arriving at the solution. So if the remainder is one, well, ideally we could just remove a one from the entire sum and then it'll be divisible by three. But there's no guarantee that we have a one, do we? So what if we didn't have a one? What would the next best, uh, Per, uh, the next best number be. It's probably going to be the, another number that has a remainder of one, which is going to be four. So it's kind of like this, like we could remove one ideally. And if not that, we want to remove four. If not that, we want to remove seven. If not that, we want to remove 10. Any of these numbers, because these all have a remainder of one when you mod by three. So in other words, the number that we would want to subtract from the total sum would be the smallest n, I guess you could say, where you mod it and the remainder is one. And this is where you might get a little bit tripped up. So I'm gonna to try to clarify this right here. What I've done so far is break the problem down into very simple terms. I took the entire sum and then I selectively remove elements to try to get the remainder to be zero, to make it divisible by three. So I didn't have to do the whole backtracking approach where I pick or I skip, because that could get really messy. Then we might possibly remove like multiple elements. But what I'm showing with this approach is that we would never want to remove three elements in the first place. What's that ever going to do for us? We would just want to remove the one that has a remainder of one. But there's actually a case where we, we would possibly want to remove two elements. Can you try to think of it? Well, what if there isn't any number divisible uh, with a remainder of one? Or, or better yet, maybe that number that is left with a remainder of one, the smallest one, maybe it's a seven, okay? But maybe we have two elements in here. I think we're allowed to have duplicates. So maybe we have two elements that are two. So two and two. Well, the good thing about these guys is they sum to four. So, Actually, this formula that I had was wrong. 
we're not looking for the smallest number that is left with a remainder of one. We're looking for the smallest sum, the sub sum, I guess uh, you could say, not like the total sum, but the smallest sum that we can get from this array that has a remainder of one. And so now my claim to you is this, that smallest sum can only have two possibilities. Either it's going to be the smallest number that once you mod it, the remainder is one, or it's going to be the smallest two numbers that when you add them together, the remainder is going to be one. And so what two numbers added together could possibly have a remainder of one? Well, you can use the intuition from yesterday's problem. Those two numbers would have to originally have a remainder of two because you take two that has a remainder of two and you add two to it that also has a remainder of two. So then you get four. And obviously when you mod that by three, you get one. I could have done it differently. I could have taken two and instead replaced it with a five. Why did I replace it with a five? Because I just added three to it. So now I know that this number is also left with a remainder of two. If I add these together, I get seven and you mod that by three, you also get a remainder of one. So to make this uh, more clear, I'm gonna say the smallest n where this is the case or also the smallest n1 plus n2 where you mod these by three and you get a remainder of one. Okay, so now that I've done that case, what if the remainder wasn't one? What if the remainder was two? Well, it's gonna be pretty similar to this except flipped. Then in that case, we want possibly the smallest n where the remainder is two or we want the smallest two numbers, n1 plus n2, where the remainder is also two. Either of these could be the minimum. And of course, we would want to take the minimum of these two and remove that from the total sum because that's what's going to maximize our result. And by the way, it's not actually guaranteed that both of these are even gonna exist in either case. Like we might, uh, we might end up in this case and maybe neither of these exists. In that case, what would we return? Well, we would probably just return zero. Same thing in this case. Okay, so now that we pretty much have the intuition of what we're trying to do, how do we actually do it? There's a few approaches I thought of, and the first one was honestly to use heaps, uh, specifically max heaps. And the reason for that is because I wanted to track, well, in this case, we would just wanna track the smallest number with a remainder of one. In the same case, we would also want to track the two smallest numbers added together with a remainder of one. Basically, that would be each of these numbers has a remainder of two. So we'd want the two smallest numbers with a remainder of two. And uh, down in this case, we would do the opposite, right? right? Just the smallest here and then the two smallest uh, there. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to have two max heaps, each of size two, because then I can, regardless of which case we hit, I can keep the two smallest for both of the cases. And you're probably wondering, why did I use a max heap? Because we can limit the size of the heap. That's a very easy way to get like the top two or the top K or whatever. So in this case, that would be two, of course. And since it's a max heap, we would always pop the minimum, guaranteeing that what's left in our heap is going to be the smallest. This approach definitely works. And believe it or not, it is constant, like pushing and popping from a heap of size two, that's constant time. The size of the heap is also going to, going to be constant because it's two. But this approach is kind of annoying to code up, especially in Python, because you don't have native max heaps. At least leak code didn't implement that. That's actually something we do have on neat code if you're interested. I'm not gonna code up this approach because we can actually keep it more simple. And rather than tracking two individual elements, we can say, what's the smallest sum such that that smallest sum divided by uh, three is equal to one. In this case, that's what we would do. And also we can keep track of the smallest sum where the mod is equal to two. And that's what we would need, of course, in this case. And I'll show you how we can calculate those. 
It's not as difficult as you might think. I think it's just easier explained in the code where I'm actually doing it. So let's go ahead and get into that. So one thing we could do is get the total sum of nums at the beginning and then just check if the remainder is equal to zero. And if that's the case, just go ahead and return total. And that works, but if we're not doing this, I'm gonna end up iterating over the entire array like this for n in nums, and I'm gonna keep track of the smallest sum with a one remainder, which I'm initially gonna to set to infinity, and same thing with the smallest sum with a two remainder. I know my variable names could be a bit more descriptive, but I, I, I'm not gonna make it a super long name. I mean, what is this, Java? Uh, but what I was gonna say is since we're iterating over here anyway, it kinda of saves us time to not uh, do this up front. So I'm just gonna initially set this to zero, and then inside of the loop, I'm gonna actually track the sum like that. And so then out here, we can handle our cases. If total modded by three is equal to zero, well, in that case, you can go ahead and return total. And otherwise, we can handle the other cases as well. So I'll just put them here for now. And then the other one would be this. Okay, so now for the actual part where we compute these two guys. Well, it's gonna depend on the current number. So obviously we wanna know is the current number divisible by three? Like does it have a remainder of one or two? Well, this case is really easy to handle. If modded by three is equal to zero, it's a multiple of three. Well, we're trying to find the smallest sum with a remainder of one. This is not gonna do anything for us other than just increase the number. And it's gonna do the same thing here. It's just gonna increase the number. So we actually don't handle this case at all. We skip that case. So the other two cases are, is the number uh, with a remainder of one or remainder of two. So this is the part where you might think it's really easy to handle. So for smallest one, we wanna know the smallest number with a remainder of one. So here, just minimize this and uh, with n. So just take the minimum like that, right? And if uh, the number is with a remainder of two, do that down here. Min of smallest two and n. So, so far so good, but here's the tricky case. If this number is divisible or has a remainder of one, we are also gonna update the smallest sum with a remainder of two, or at least possibly, because this is what we're gonna do. Smallest two is going to be the minimum of either itself right now, or can you tell me what else we would put over here? Well, if we already had a number with a remainder of one, and now this n is a new number with a remainder of one, it's possible actually that you add these two numbers up together, that's obviously gonna give us a remainder of two, and it is theoretically possible that those two together could be smaller than this individual number that has a remainder of two. So that's what we're gonna do here. N plus smallest one. And this is where the bug is. It's very subtle, but notice the order that we did these in. We do not want to update smallest two with the new value of smallest one. We wanted the original because if we use the new one, well, then it's gonna be set to N and then we're just using N twice and that might not be allowed. We can't use the same element twice. So unless these were already the same, this would give us an issue. So that's why we're gonna swap the order of these. Notice how this one depends on the first one, but the first one does not depend on the second one. So we don't even need a temporary variable. You can just uh, flip uh, the order of these two. So down here, we're gonna do something pretty similar. And again, I'm going to uh, put that one above. So smallest one might be updated. It might be now smaller than what it originally was. And the way we would get this is by taking the original smallest two and the current number, which also has a remainder of two, add those two up. It's possible it could be smaller than the current one. And again, that would be the case where like the smallest one remainder is seven and maybe the other two are like two and two, for example. So that's what I'll do here. I'll do n plus smallest two. And that's pretty much it for computing those smallest sums with those respective remainders. And now to update this down here, it's pretty easy. If the total has a remainder of one, then we want to return total minus the smallest uh, one and then here return total 
minus smallest two. Okay, so now I'm gonna run it and I'll mention that this part actually tripped me up. And here on the left, you can see it does work. It's pretty efficient. But the thing you might be wondering is, well, what if smallest one didn't exist? Like what if we never updated it? It would be infinity. And then we're taking total minus infinity. That's gonna be negative infinity. And the same thing down here. Well, think about this. If the total remainder has a remainder of one, then of course it's gonna be possible to create a sum with a remainder of one. At the very least, it would be equal to total. And uh, in that case, we would end up with a return value of zero. Same thing down here. If the smallest, if the total remainder had a remainder of two, then of course this is gonna exist. In the worst case, it'll be the same as the total. So that's why it works. If you found this helpful, check out NeatCode.io. We're actually having a Black Friday sale. So if you wanted a membership, now is definitely the time to do so. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon.